live. Good evening, members, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen watching on YouTube. Uh, welcome to this evening's Scrutiny Committee of Economy, Environment and Place, held at 7pm on Thursday, the 17th of March, 2022. Um, so as everybody is aware, this is being broadcast live and will be recorded for publication at a later date. I now refer you to our agenda um, and item one, apologies for absence. I've received apologies from councillors Rout and Alcheski with no substitutes, from councillor Jenny Cooper with councillor Wilkes substituting and also from cabinet member Trevor Johnson. Are there any further apologies? No. So we'll move on to item two, which is declarations of interest. Does any member wish to declare an interest on an item on the agenda, please? So that's a negative. So minutes of the previous meeting, uh, which are found on pages three to six. Um, are there any points of um, that anybody is not comfortable with on those minutes or can we take them as read, please? Thank you, Ms. Red. I see. Thank you. I would just draw a member and officer's attention to two items on page four um, of those minutes, which is um, Councillor Fia stated that the demolition of the old buildings and erection of the new sites, um, it would be useful if we had some further consultation with members, which was agreed through the chair. So if um, Simon McKenney is watching. Can he please refer to that when he gives his update? And also there was um, an answer given on the work to the former civic officers, which was expected to begin in the autumn of 2022. But we can actually see that that work commenced around about four or five weeks ago. So it, it's not a correction to the minutes because that is what was stated is just really an observation as to fact. So we will now move on to um, item four, which was an update from Cabinet. Uh, we do actually have um, item six on the agenda, which is the uh, update from Street Scene from our uh, meeting of last year. I'm being told from Councillor Sweeney that there's no further update from Cabinet. Yeah, that's correct, Chairman. It's just item number six is what was missed off last time. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll move on to um, item number five, which is the first substantive item. And uh, we're joined um, this evening by Alex Taylor, who is seated twice to my left, who is the, uh, the bid manager for the town centre. And we've asked her along to give us an update on as to how the bid is going and trading and Christmas, etc. So uh, welcome and I'll hand over to you. Can you put your mic on, please? You just need to press the button. Thank Sorry. you. Sorry, I'll just share my screen. Okay. Um, so I do know a few people in the room. So for those who haven't met me, my name's Alex Taylor. I am the manager for Newcastle and Zion Bid. Um, I keep saying I'm new, but actually I've been there nearly a year in two months time and it's gone pretty quickly. So um, we've done we've done a lot in that nearly 12 months. So I'm just going to give an update on the past 12 months really and what we're looking to do in the next 12 months also. So these are our three main objectives uh, for our business plan for the town centre. So all of our money obviously has to been, be spent in line with each of these objectives. So supporting business growth um, and investment with a great business offer, create a welcoming and attractive town, ensuring a safe experience and celebrate and promote Newcastle and Lyme as a town for all, uh, preserving heritage and culture. So these are some of the things which we've done over the last 12 months to fall in line with objective number one. So we do a monthly networking with local businesses, but actually we invite people from Stoke as well. We do encourage all to come along. Um, we, I have been developing a, clo a closer partnership, working, trying to link in 
partners with the businesses in the area. So going out and doing walks and meeting businesses with uh, people from the council and other partnerships, Aspire, etc. cetera. Um, I do a face-to-face -face Friday. So one thing I have feedback from previously was um, the, business, bid, the businesses didn't meet people from the bid as much as they would have liked. So I try and allocate every Friday where I just pop out and see businesses or I do walk arounds. Today, I've gone out for a couple of hours as well, just because I'm really busy tomorrow with meetings. Um, we've done a Wi-Fi launch for the town centre. So Newcastle has actually got quite a good USP that we offer free town centre Wi-Fi. We, we're going to launch and we started putting some stickers down throughout the town centre, but um, they got stolen within like a day. The, so we've gone back, we've been in a debate with that uh, company, but we're going to get them sprayed down now. Um, just informing people that there is free town centre Wi-Fi, um, something that, you know, no other town centre's got close by. We support the Business Boost Awards and we make a contribution and are sat on the board for that. So supporting small businesses within Newcastle um, and you know, linking in with other businesses to support them as well and acknowledge uh, the, the great businesses that we have in the area. We do a lot of footfall monitor, monitoring. So we've just, in, well, we installed nearly 18 months, two years ago, a new footfall monitoring system. Um, and we've been ironing out some niggles with that as well. Uh, but we do report weekly footfall uh, figures out to the council and other partners and then what we can do with that is monitor particular events so we can really drill down so if there's an event on um, and I'll come to this in a minute say the artisan market which is really successful we can quite clearly see and compare that to other Sundays the footfall in the town centre um, and I did do some monitoring on the free parking which we did so before we would say oh if we do the free parking, we'll get more people in the town centre. So I've monitored that footfall to see if it did make a difference. We offer free first aid courses out to businesses. Uh, we did some Google Garage courses to try and support small businesses uh, doing their own marketing, getting onto Facebook, promoting themselves, health and safety as well. And then I, me and Charlotte, who is our marketing manager, we do one-to-one -one support. Uh, with the businesses so I'm trying to get out there and support the smaller businesses um, whether they need some links with environmental health or they just need a little bit of guidance on how to use their Facebook page um, so I think that's really really beneficial to the businesses in the area as well and then something that's new and I think will support businesses um, is the uh, the SWAN, which is safety of women and girls at night. So myself and Charlotte at the bid have been managing, we're opening a new hub. It's a, it's a pilot and uh, we're doing it on behalf of the Borough Council. So they won the funding and we're delivering the hub. So that'll be opening next Friday. And I'm hoping that'll promote the businesses in the area and make people feel a bit more safer coming into the town centre and support the businesses that way. Um, creating a welcoming and attractive town with a safe experience. So supporting the development of the markets, including the artisan market, we funded quite a bit of the entertainment for that, but we work quite closely with Nitmore and the market managers as well. Um, we've purchased a, a town centre marquee, which we actually haven't opened up yet. So we want to encourage people to use that for different events in the town centre. Um, we previously last year did the green space outside of Wilco's and then we've done smaller um, objectives such as Father Fest, October Fest, and then the Love Local Card, which we joined with J2. And um, the ambassadors are obviously patrolling quite a lot and they're linking in with the security marshals also. But even me and Charles get out and do some patrols. I've been out there today and uh, working with the ambassadors and the security on a couple of issues. Sponsorship of Britain and Bloom, um, and then Oh, I've mentioned the artisan markets and events which we put on in the town centre, which are things like the Christmas lights, which aren't Astley, homecoming, and then we're going to be doing things like Jubilee and Armed Forces Day. So celebrate and promote Newcastle as a town for all. 
we've done sponsorships of various evenings, Newcastle College, support charity events, and working on charities individually as well. We communicate with the businesses quite often. We send out e-bulletins. So we try and get as much inf information from partners as well so we can, we can share that out. And then I developed and implemented a Stay Connected card for all the businesses in the area. So um, to give them um, key information on all the partners and how they can report to the police quite quickly, I wanted to make it really easy for both them and market store holders to be able just to take a picture on the phone and it linked straight to the police because that was one gripe that we were hearing quite a lot. We've implemented a CRM system this year so we can actually track everything we do with businesses and that includes all of our ambassadors so if a business comes to us and says oh you know you're not supporting the whole town center's not doing anything for me I can pull that up and see they've had six or seven visits from maybe me and the ambassadors and the security we've reported to street scene on their behalf the street scene's been out to them that they've had police support so we record literally everything on there which I think is really really good We've run various competitions uh, to win vouchers for town centre shops to encourage people to spend back in the town centre. So we do that quite regularly when we've got events. And then the digital totems that are around the town centre, um, we have been advertising uh, for events and uh, for local businesses on there. For any of the bid, one, bid businesses as well, they get a discount. Um, and then... We supported with PPE in, in relation to COVID. So we give out masks, sanitizer, and all the markers for, for staying, um, keeping distance, et cetera. And then we've focused it on the heritage. Um, we've applied for Arts Council funding for the past five years now. And uh, that's for both Homecoming and Astley Fest. So that generates quite a big chunk of income. And we contribute to that as well. Um, each year and we've just put another application in this year an even bigger one to hopefully put um, a second event on at Christmas as well so obviously we're the business improvement district so we are focused on business engagement and supporting the businesses so as I've just touched on we created a, a, we've started using a CRM system to ensure that all businesses are being supported so we can pull up on there if businesses haven't been seen and then we can go and focus on them to make sure everyone is getting enough support and visits. Um, we're trying to record all the engagement with the partners on there as well so we can support the partners that we work with and then we're just trying to build that relationship so I'm really trying to get out there and be a face-to-face -face person rather than speaking over the phone or on email so if a business does phone me and they've got an issue usually I'll just say oh we'll come down I'll be there in five if I can and then try and support them as much as I can um we've obviously supported with the town centre security we initially supported them with training and, and our ambassadors have done quite a lot with them um, now they're obviously fully up and running and um, we're kind of spreading ourselves out a, a little bit more now um, and then we were supporting the pilot of town centre ranger which has been really really good so what's coming up this year so the diverted giving scheme which we're working in conjunction with the council um, where we're going to be running a campaign. I think that will launch next month. I think the, the tap points have just been delivered or they're due to be delivered. Um, so these points will go around the town centre and we're running a campaign to encourage people to give on a tap point rather than buying food, drink or giving money to our rough sitters in the town centre. It's probably one of the biggest complaints that we get um, in the town centre from the businesses. So we, we, uh, we're we recognising that that is an issue, um, but how can we support both sides with that? The SWAN, which is the safety of women and girls at night, the safe, the safe hub, which will be in the town centre. Me and Charles will be running that. So we'll be in there every Friday and Saturday night until midnight, um, doing wayfinding for women and girls in the town centre and giving out things to support them. So goodie bags or individual things like personal alarms, free Uber rides, 
um, water, snacks. Uh, and as part of that campaign, I've located four spaces in the town centre. So um, some boxes will be sprayed down. And these are spots where women or anybody, but for this campaign, it's women, can go and stand to get a taxi, an Uber or a pickup, and it's well lit and covered by CCTV. So I've worked with the CCTV chaps on that. We've got Limelight Festival coming back again this year, um, which is great. That's the first weekend of May. And then we've got the Jubilee weekend. I did put in a bid with um, the, the National Lottery to try and secure some funding for the Jubilee weekend for an outdoor cinema um, for two days. And then hopefully I was going to stream some things live from London on there. But we've just had some, uh, we've had something back to say that we weren't successful with that bid. So I'm just looking at different funding avenues for that because I really want that to go ahead. Um, this year we're doing Armed Forces Day, so we're working with the tri services and we're putting a bid for money and a, a bid for money to support that day as well. But that's going to go ahead regardless. Um, the Jazz and Blues is a possibility. That's again based on a bid which I, I shall be putting in for that. Homecoming is definitely going ahead, and Homecoming at Winter is another bid that we've put in, but we're pretty certain we'll be successful with that. We're hopefully going to be running as a pilot throughout Ju July, Street Food Fridays. So on Fridays, we'll be having street food, a mini stage and some entertainment up to about 9pm. So then we can encourage people to then go off and you go into the nighttime economy. So we'll be trialling that for a month. I know it's really successful over in Stone. So we're just mimicking. It might work, it might not. We are working on improving the Wi-Fi even more. Um, obviously celebrating the Commonwealth Games. We're going to be doing an Oktoberfest a little bit bigger this year. Um, hopefully we've spoken to some of some people who know lots about the history of Newcastle. We'd like to set up a bit of a, a town trail regarding some of the stories around Newcastle and the Christmas light switch on as well. We'll be doing that again this year. I know I've spoken previously about how much the um, in, in a pre-meeting how much Christmas costs and I can drill that down into that but we will probably be here all night so if anyone wants to know some specifics on that I can come back to it at the end. So these are monthly footfall figures I've included them because we can start comparing now for it from last January as you can see last January and February the footfall figures were quite low so the difference between the dark purple and the light purple dark people are repeat visitors and the light people are I just say Mr Chen we can't see January this year perhaps if we minimise the, the little thing I think if you click on the the, the one line on the, the zoom box it might shrink it um, okay. um, can you see it if I just do that no um, it's the Zoom box, Mr. Chairman. If, if, if I don't know if we've got control of it, but if, if you can click on the, the, the little okay. line, it will shrink that box to nothingness and it will make the rest of the screen visible. Oh. Is that okay like that? I'm not very technical now. No. Can I move that along? No. no, we don't have control of the screen on this side. No, the December and January are, yeah, I can't see that on here, unfortunately. Can you just intimate whether it's higher than the January on the left hand side? <laughs> that, that, I think it's what yeah. would interest the members. It, it, the December and January are pretty similar to the September. It's the, the, the December is slightly higher than what you can see for September. And then January is just ever so slightly lower. So um, we can see the average dwell time in the, in the town centre is around 150 minutes and the busiest hour is 12 till 1, which is a given. It's always really busy around lunchtime. 
Um, and we can drill down into these figures, whether it's a week by week, an hour by hour, where people come into the town centre, where they leave, where they stay around the most. And we change the, the figures as well to make sure that it's not picking up on people coming through like Just Eat and bus, on the bus and things like that. So this was regarding the free parking, which I found really interesting. So obviously we gave the, the council um, gave free parking between 10 and 1 p.m. from um, October to January the 5th. And um, you can see the light blue is August, this one's September, and then it goes in order, November, December, January. I included February as well. Um, oh no, I didn't, sorry, August to January. I was going to, but it shrunk them. So we can see that obviously the number of visits between 10 o'clock and 1 p.m. specifically dropped quite a lot in January. It actually went lower in December than it did in November, regardless of the free parking. Um, so from the figures, really, that free parking between 10 and 1 didn't increase the footfall in the town centre, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, and we can give exact figures on that as well, if anybody wants them. But there was really no dif difference. There was a slight increase, as you can see, um, in the hours, but that's quite typical for November, December time anyway, for all the events that we had going on. Um, touching on vacancy rates, which this is from Springboard, so people may have already seen this. Newcastle's quite high. We're not number one, so Wolverhampton's knocked us off that top spot finally. Um, but we still do have a high vacancy rate in our town centre. And I have we have spoken to local estate agents and they are getting an increase in inquiries and more places have been taken over and there's new businesses coming to town. So even when COVID has been around, there are businesses that have opened and have done exceptionally well in our town centre, um, such as the Greek Bakery, which I don't know if anyone's been in there. It's always really busy. They've just expanded and changed it so people can sit down. Um, they, you know, they opened in COVID and they're doing that much now. They're having to employ more people. Um, I'm hoping that they get a bigger unit somewhere in our town centre. So um, Sandoz as well. Uh, Sandoz are quite well known for being savvy with opening when we have events on and have, for example, the artisan market on, where we do have some bricks and mortar businesses that say, oh, well, you know, it's, it's not doing anything for us. Well, Sandoz open quite often on an artisan market because they know it's on and most of the time sell out and have to shut. So they're being quite savvy with how they're operating. The Cake House, um, they opened down in Fog Street and since opening, they've become that busy. They've had to shut it. They were originally having it as a cafe, but they've had to close it because they just are having that many orders. Um, Preen and then the Green Gram shop, which has opened on Mariel Street, and they're doing quite well. And then within the nighttime economy, we've got the Carlton, which has opened, uh, and that's a lovely, lovely building, and the Drunken Parrot. So businesses are opening and they are doing well. And I think that's really good and it is a promotion of the town centre. So these are just a few things that we often get. Uh, criticised for that people come to us with uh, problems and, and it's mainly the ASB and the town centre. Obviously that's been addressed through the security office offices but even though we're all working in close partnership we still constantly come in against struggles with it um, and the main thing they're always saying along with the town centre ambassadors and security is the lack of police on the town centre. That's why we created the uh, contact cards because I'm trying to say to businesses you need to always be reporting everything the more reports that go in it shows that that is actually a need for the police rather than just coming to us or the security as a first port of call and then we get communication there needs to be better communication with all the working partners and I think that's 
that's picking up quite a lot now um, and getting out there event information. So we've created an event page. So we're working, we've just started to develop that and we're hoping by the middle of this year that that event page will be quite substantial for Newcastle underline. And that's it. Thank you very much, Alex. That was very comprehensive and some really interesting information there. So I'll open the floor up to, to members who'd like to uh, either ask questions or make any comments. Councillor Panta. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Alex. There's two things that briefly I wanted to ask you. But first, it was Oktoberfest. Is this anything on the lines of the German Oktoberfest? Yeah, so Just having lived in there and been to it when I was living out there, I know what it could be like. Yeah, we're going to have, we've got an events company that's going to put up a big German kind of the, the full tent with the, what are they called? The bars, the proper, the little wooden, the Oktoberfest bars, and they're going mm. to sell, I can't think what the name of the bars we are. Is that what they're called? I don't know. Um, yeah, but it's going to be a full, a full thing with umper bands and and things um so they're going to set up either on goose street or the town center if we can so we've not mm. ironed out the the finer details there the, the other thing i wanted to ask about and i know you briefly covered it to a certain extent is what's been done to encourage new businesses to come in because it's increasing number of businesses closing down i mean there's one in the uh, rope up that's gone now mm. wayne walks is going very shortly um, what can we do to encourage them, these sort of businesses to stay here? It's, it's another thing that we're asked quite a lot. One thing that I'm trying to do with the board is to generate um, a support package almost to offer to new businesses. Um, so I'm hoping that there's key businesses in Newcastle that can create kind of a, a group where they may say, if they're a website company, if you're a new business, you know, we'll do it at a discounted rate. We're in accountants and we can give you two hours free support. So businesses helping other businesses. So that's my aim for this year is to try and get a good working group and get a package together where if you come here, these businesses will all support you through us and whether we can fund them with small courses or something that they might need to encourage them to come and set up a business here in Newcastle. But I think just mentioning a couple of the businesses that I've set up, I think if you're a business and you're willing to be flexible like Sandoz are, then you can be successful in our town centre. And it's been proven by quite a lot of the new businesses that I've set up over the last 12 to 18 months. Um, those that are leaving, when we do go and speak to you, I know Wayne Walker has have said that they feel that they do better with the van rather than a bricks and mortar business. So they've started having the van on the market instead. Um, but it's... Can you put your mic on if you're speaking, please? Uh, the the uh, van alone's been once, it'll come back only when the shop closes. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so um, we do try and speak to, to the businesses and see how we can support. I think that support package being in place is really crucial and important. But I think each business, as they are leaving, it, so for example, we can try and say to them, and we have, it might be a business that doesn't have any social media or promotes themselves. So we've tried to say to them, you know, this is something that you might need to do. And we'll give them that support and advice, but it's, it's up to them if they take it. Some will take that support and advice, some don't. So we can't force it upon them, um, but we are trying as much as we can. Thank you. Any other members? Councillor Fear? Oh, thanks very much, Mr Chairman. Um, I, th I thought that was very heartening. I was, I was very pleased to hear that. And the only thing that disappointed me a little bit was the way that we are being let down a bit by the police. And I think, you know, lobbying on that, trying to break through the police's seemingly can't do culture is quite important in that regard for business and to encourage people to come into the town centre. And I can understand why sometimes you know, I, I, there's a negative experience and then that beds down and it, it has waves and such like. So it is really important, I think, for us all to pull our weight in that regard. Two other things, if I may. Um, very interested in the idea of Wi-Fi. I think that's um, a major plus and it, 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 it um, will attract a younger group of people into the town centre. 
Um, what's it called? Because I, 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 I'll be honest with you, I mean, this is probably my fault. I, I wasn't aware that it was there. Um, looking at my little Wi-Fi now, I mean, I can get your phone, but I, I don't know what I don't know what it's called. Um, you can't get the town centre Wi-Fi unless you're outside. Okay, so right. It has to be outside, and I think it just comes it comes up. It'll be sprayed all on the floor soon. Um, it's I think it's NUL free Wi-Fi. Okay, so, so nice, nice and transparent, and if you press yeah. settings, it will pop up. That that's and that's the key thing. Every time you come in, mine automatically connects as soon as I go outside, and then it yeah. works from pillars. So as you walk, it kind of your phone automatically disconnects and reconnects to um, a, a, a Wi-Fi pillar. So you won't notice that, but it'll do it seem it, it will do it automatically. Um, and then as soon as you start going to the outer ring road, it drops off. So it's only for the town centre. Um, it doesn't go through buildings because then all the businesses would jump onto that. Um, and nobody would have to pay for Wi-Fi in the town centre. No, that, that's un entirely understandable, but I think <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's a really positive step in the right direction. Just one other thing, if I may, I mean, as a, as a professional historian, I'm, I'm also very interested in, in heritage and the idea of a town trail, I think, is an absolutely great one, especially, again, I think there's an opportunity there to rope in businesses, because obviously if you've got a trail and it goes past your shop, there are there's a potential captive audience there. Mm -hmm. Um does the bid have anything to do, or can the bid have anything to do with the rather sad looking? And I, I, you know, I haven't looked at it for a couple of weeks, so I, I might it may have been fixed. But there is a perspex sign in the town centre uh, with a little bit of history on, but it, it the, the perspex is sort of greying, and it would be really nice if that could be improved, and indeed a couple more could be put down. I guess with a trail that would be an ideal way of, of targeting the trail around the town centre? We we work with um, Appetite, who have got some artists in at the moment who are um, commissioning some maps for Newcastle Town Centre. All the maps are various maps, that, um, ones for the nighttime economy. There's a big one on Lancaster building that Chloe Breeze has done previously. I don't know if you've seen it, and I think it was on one of the billboards where she's drawn our town centre. Um, and all these artists are doing various maps. One's linking in with safe, safer wayfinding. So maybe um, these maps could be displayed in those. I'm thinking that could be quite nice. The trail that we're hoping to commission, which is surrounding like folklore tales, which Newcastle's got loads of history, um, specifically for Halloween. And we we're gonna have that as a, um, a walking trail that you could listen to on a, on a podcast um but i think those perspex ones do i'm sure they're council owned those but i think maybe having them cleaned up and have it we could print the maps and put them in to make them look nicer um when they're done that's definitely something i can look at and i'll put that down to speak to them about thanks very much on gruesome stuff by the way could i i commend to you thomas harrison who's got a little plaque of course but um um Rumour has it, and it, it, uh, as historians always say, it's not my period, but nonetheless, it is interesting that I am told that when he was taken down from being hanged, drawn and quartered, so in a very bad state, he still had the strength to punch the hangman, which might might be a nice little twist to put in, in, in the trail. I like that. <laughs> I won't be doing the trail, <laughs> personally, but I'll be going out to historians, but I'll, 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 I'll speak to them about him. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fear. Um, just on the, the point of the police, because I was going to raise that as well. Um, and certainly when I talk to business owners around the town centre, that's their main gripe, is the lack of presence. So um, I was going to suggest to members that we ask the borough commander to attend the next scrutiny meeting, specifically to report on presence within the town centre, how we can get more and to give us some statistics on it. I see a number of nods, so if our clerk can make a note of that, please, for the next meeting. Any other questions or comments, yeah, Councillor Sweeney? Yeah. yeah, thank you, Jim, and thank you for that, that, that talk, Alex. I thought it was absolutely excellent and really, really interesting to know things that are going on. I think you'll find when Simon Kennedy does his presentation, he might be talking about broadband and Wi-Fi and things like that in the town centre. That's part of the town deal funding. So I think we'll hear some good news. I agree entirely. I think it's an important thing to have. Um, I'm a huge fan of our artisan market. I, I, I never fail to eulogise over it, and uh, I won't do it again because it's 
Yeah, I say it all the time. But um, what I do find frustrating, though, is some of the businesses that don't open, um, like you say, Sandoz, sell out. I don't know other people do it. Is it just they can't get the staff work on a Sunday or, or, or what? Because it seems you know, your your sole trade is business. You, you'd open, wouldn't you? So we take good money. Yeah, we, I've spoken to numerous businesses about this, and the ones that have the smaller independents. Um, so Sparrow Hawk opened on one of them, and they ended up selling like it was the best day of the year. Sold loads of the stock. So the bigger one, the the bigger businesses say, well, of course, we, we, we just don't open on a Sunday and that's nothing to do with us. We're paid by, I don't know, in bargains, so we're not fussed. We've gone around to the independent traders and owners and tried to encourage them and they say, well, it's our day off. So I've said, well, maybe just for that one week, could you advertise that you're going to have an extra day off on a Tuesday and because you're opening on a Sunday? Oh, no, we've got regular people who come in on the Tuesday. So we've really, really tried to push that with businesses. Apart from going in and forcing them and saying, well, I'll open up for you so you can see that you'll do well. That there's All we can do is give words of encouragement and hope that they, they, they see that as, oh, actually, I might do that. So I think me and, me and Castle Fear are not adverse going to Windmill Cafe for a, a Portuguese breakfast at a time. And he's now open on an artisan market. He takes his cakes, isn't he, Victor? He does. I mean, yeah. he didn't do that for nothing, does he? You know, he's making good money out of it. I just don't understand. And mm. I won't name names and other, other, other cafes need to use them. But I just cannot understand why they don't want it. It's Same. really good money. A load of people in the town ready to spend money. We, we've also offered, um, the artisan market have offered spaces to the bricks and mortar businesses to say, uh, and that was an agreement, you know, they can have a free store. And I think Victor at the Windmill Cafe is probably the only one who really takes it off. So, yeah. Thank you. There was um, j just one thing, really, that I, I wanted to ask, and that was, is there anything in your view, now you've been in post for a year, that we as a borough councillor can do to, to help? I think the biggest thing that I faced is um, funding. Previously, the bid um, was much bigger. We had about 700 businesses and now we only have 300. So we changed the rateable value. So those that pay in have to have a rateable value of 12,000 and above now. So we're trying to support the more smaller businesses. Well, of course, 300 businesses paying in and 700, there's a big difference there. So our budget significantly changed from this year this financial year and we are still expected to deliver the same events and pull in the same footfall and if not when I've come into the post it was well you've got to do even better you know you've got to do better so that's where I'm struggling so I'm trying to learn to write bids to, to pull in additional funds for big events but I feel like that's well I've not been successful with one so I'm going back to the drawing board but there's only me really at the bid who manages it and Charlotte supports me but mainly with marketing so I am only one person um I think for me it's it's probably a little bit more support with the, the events um and, and pulling in that footfall or even support with trying to bid on different streams of funding um because obviously we want the, the events that go on in the town centre. We want to make it a destination for people to come. We want the Limelight Festival. We want the Jazz and Blues Festival. And when you drill down to specifics of actually how much those things cost, staging alone is massive. Um, that budget is quickly gone. The Christmas light switch on typically takes, and Christmas itself, typically takes up nearly one third of our whole yearly budget. And that's just putting up obviously the Christmas lights and implementing the switch on um, and having a stage and fireworks, et cetera. So um, I think it's it, that's that's for me where we would like a little bit more support. No, that, that's fine. Thank you. I think there's a couple, couple of aspects there. So firstly, in terms of trying to get more footfall in, that's through more active communications, isn't it? And I do know the council um, social media do promote those. So we can just ask that that is um, obviously escalated. Um, with regard to funding bids and help with it is what I'm hearing. You know, is that something maybe Councillor Sweeney you could take away to see if there's anything we can do 
just to support on that in the short term, do you think? Actually, actually writing the, writing yeah. the bids up, sorry. Actually, write, actually writing the bids, Alex, with you. Yeah, that would be it's something that's quite new to me. So I've, I've done only two so far and um, I've gone to different people for various support. So it's just having maybe if there's somebody who's really knowledgeable about it, casting their eye on it or giving advice, etc. So I can learn and get better and get more money. Yeah, that's, that's a very, very fair question. A very fair point. Um, and I'll totally take that back. I think you're making it is your joy. Uh, yeah, uh, no, it's a, it's, a, it's a fair point. Thanks for that. Yep. Okay. I'm not saying we'll do anything. It will really happen, but it's certainly a fair point. And the question he's asking, and what resource we can do to help me help me sort people. Yep. That's good. Thank you. And I think even if it's just in the short term, whilst you, you get the knowledge base up and the experience. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. We are going to have to move on um, because it is 20 to 8. Um, the one thing I would ask you for is, can you circulate the costs of the Christmas event, please? Because I think there is a, a larger discussion point to have, but we can do that internally as to how we can support on that. But uh, I thank you for your time tonight and your presentation. Thank you. Right, so we'll now move on to item six on the agenda, which is the update uh, from Street Scene. And this was following the September um, resolution that we made to see how, how street scene can be future-proofed for the expansion of housing and business within the borough. Um, so our uh, street scene manager, Darren Green, is here to take us through this report. Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, it's a very brief report. Hopefully everybody's had a chance to read through it. I'll probably just glide through the main uh, salient parts of, of the report. Uh, clearly, uh, as Chair said, this is about a current position of street scene and in preparing for the future. It's not just street scene that's preparing for the future, but the whole council is. And obviously street scene is part of the one council program uh, in terms of the street the strategic review of the organization and how we actually plan for the future. So I think it's very, very important to state that in terms of any review of street scene, it's not a standalone uh, team or a standalone section of the council, it's part of the council. And the way we move forward will be intrinsic to, intrinsic to the rest of the council as well. So in terms of street scene, uh, we continue to review uh, our position uh, in terms of an annual review of the services that we deliver. And that's based on the budget allocation that we have for the team. Um, we look at the peaks and troughs of service uh, uh, requests and the way that we deliver services as well. And as most councillors will know, the activities that we have within street scene can be quite seasonal, uh, depending on the types of activities we do from parks management through to uh, grass cutting tree management through to uh, then the, the, the mainstay of the team is around street cleanliness and litter picking and so on and so forth. So we, we have a, a, a multi-skilled team which we move to areas of demand uh, uh, as and when we go throughout the year. So we do that and part of the one council programme is looking at at the demand that we have and how we actually uh, deliver uh, services to customers, to the residents, uh, and how we can make that more streamlined. Uh, so that's a, a continuous improvement that we, we currently look at. What's very important to street scene, as it will be for most of the uh, departments as well, is around succession planning. Um, not uncommon to the rest of the, the council is that we have an aging profile within the team. So it's Im important to us to look at that and when the opportunity arises through staff uh, turnover is look at uh, look, look at the, the skills matrix, the skills abilities that we have within the team and plug any gaps that actually come through. So we're, we're quite adept, I think it, 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 it's, it's, it's stepping up to that challenge. And we'll look at skills development within the team. So again, that multi, multi skill team that we have is making sure we've got the right skills in the right place to enable us to carry out the tasks that we need in a safe, appropriate and, and effective and efficient manner but also look at skilling for the future as well. So we're very keen as, as, a, as a section to take on apprentices as well. Uh, so we, we do that on a, on a continuous basis and encouraging younger people to come through to the team and hopefully invest in them for the future uh, as we go forward. And I think with the ethos of the team that we have as well is looking at our internal talent that we have. So where we get individuals that we know have got the ability, capability, the attitude and aptitude so to move on, we'll, we'll harness that and work with those individuals as we take them forward. In terms of planning for the future as well, so that, that's around, uh, some, some of that is around the people. But what we are as a department as well is we use uh, 
will facilitate the use of, of heavy machinery and heavy equipment throughout. So as you'll be aware, we use small precinct sweepers, for example, up to large 17-ton uh, uh, road sweepers as well, through to grass cutting machinery, chainsaws, to, uh, strimmers, and so on and so forth. So all of that equipment has a finite life that goes to it. So the large plants and the large equipment uh, will be programmed for replacement over a number of years. Uh, so what we'll do is rather than having a big hit every few years, is stagger that replacement program so that that evens out the expenditures to the council. And what we'll do as part of that program in replacing, for example, a, a street sweeper is look at the the vibration, the hand, the, what's called the halves, the hand on vibration aspects of that machinery, so we can reduce the exposure and the risk to staff in terms of their usage of it. Um, and so what we're trying to do is, is weave in the health and safety aspects of the replacement of any machinery, so whether that's through halves or through the noise exposure to the machinery that we have as well. Uh, and obviously underpin that with, with, with good training and, and good uh, checks and balances that goes on with, with the team as well. In terms of uh, our next steps, uh, as we've touched on, uh, we're going through the One Council programme. Uh, so part of that is around the One Front Door and the Custom Hood project and looking at the back office functions of the team and trying to streamline them as far as you possibly can do. Or rather streamline it, it's more about looking at technology to enable us to do that job, to do those tasks more effectively, more efficiently, uh, making sure we capture uh, information and evidence and making sure we get back to potentially get back to the customer more effectively as well uh, with updates and, and usually an outcome to the, 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 the piece of work, uh, the service request that they've actually asked us to deliver for them. And part of the uh, One Front Door Customer Hub project is around the mobile multifunctional team, which I'm sure a number of you will have heard about. And that's about focusing in on uh, low level uh, antisocial behavior, particularly around the town center and link that through environmental enhancements uh, and targeting uh, of particular geographical locations. So uh, Alex has mentioned the town ranger who's absolutely pivotal to, to that approach, but also the wider team there in terms of the town marshals uh, and the, the underpinning team that goes with, uh, with, with that setup as well. So it's very much a proactive approach and a reactive approach uh, to tackling issues of low level antisocial behavior within the town at the minute with a, a, a ambition to actually extend that to other uh, retail district areas as well. The customer hub, um, very much around, is helping us as a team, is to triage uh, service enquiries as they come through, which releases our management uh, time uh, to actually tackle the staff management issues and the service improvement aspects as well. So rather than us dealing with customer enquiries coming through via the phone, for example, uh, as you know, customers are being pushed very much to self-select a, a reporting mechanism on, on, on the council's website, which works extremely well. And customer services will also get involved, sorry, the customer hub will also get involved with that in terms of giving feedback to the customer as well. So all in all, there's a whole raft of um, good housekeeping, service improvements and reviews that are currently underway to ensure that we're fit for the future. And I think the key to this is always to be, a, a, be flexible and being uh, being adept to change and then embrace that change as we move forward uh, to ensure that we're delivering the best possible service that we possibly can do. And I think that's it, Chair. Thank you. I'll hand over to members for any uh, questions. Councillor Fear. Thanks very, very much, Mr Chairman. Really, it's just, um, um, and I hope other colleagues will associate themselves with this, just to say thank you to the Street Scene team. I've been, um, uh, my work pattern this, this last term has been getting out early in the morning, and when I go down into the town centre to go through it to work, I always see people with the sweepers working hard, making sure the town is nice and clean for the working day that's going to come. And I think that's absolutely great. So um, um, all I want to say is thank you very much to the Street Scene team. I think they're doing a cracking job. Thank you, Councillor Fear. Any other members wish to speak? No. Just, just a couple of things from myself. Um, one is on the, you make reference quite a number of times about the importance of the One Council programme and strategically, I think that is becoming more and more important to the way in which we provide our service delivery. Um, I don't think that's something that we've had an awful lot of exposure to as members. Yeah, I think is a fair, is a fair um, point. And what I was going to suggest, and I'll look again to members is 
maybe at our September committee uh, that we ask for um, a review and update on the, the one uh, council provision so that we can gain a greater understanding of it um, and look for views on that, please. Yeah? Okay. Seems so, so not unreasonable, Mr Chairman, but of course there is an election between then and there and um, perhaps we shouldn't be anticipating what um, a new shaped committee might look at in the future, but um, well, it could be down as a suggestion. I, I, I've no quite much with that. No, I, I totally understand that, but it's within our remit to still shape the, um, the future uh, meetings. And I think whichever um, is leading the, the, the council in the future, it's important that we actually we look at the one council provision. So members seem content with that. So we'll build it into September, please. Um, one question for you, Darren, and that was um, some other councils use apps to report um, uh, issues and request service provision. I, I don't believe we do use an app. Um, is there any view of that for the future? Yep, uh, absolutely. As part of the one council programme for customer hub. Uh, and the way that we look at efficiencies and technology that we're bringing on board is using an app is very much in the, in the target frame of, of looking at that and exploring it. South Staffs, for example, use it very, very successfully. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we've met with them, we've looked at the resources that go into it, and we've looked at their, their model that goes with it as well. So it's certainly something that's very, very attractive to us within a street scene perspective. Okay, that's good to hear. Thank you. So the proposal is the committee receives the report and acknowledges the current position in relation to street scene and the work which is in progress as part of the one council programme. We all contend to receive that proposal. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Darren. Okay, thank you. So moving on to item seven on the agenda, which is the future high streets fund and town investment plans for Kidsgrove and Newcastle under Lyme. Uh, I'm hoping that our Executive Director for Regeneration, Simon McKenney, is going to come on remotely. Uh, and I see, in fact, that the presentation is on the screen. So I'll... Just introduce this guy. Yes, so Councillor Sweeney, would you like to introduce him? I know, I know uh, Mr McKenney is, uh, is poised, um, but if I can just uh, bring you certain highlights. Um, as we're all aware, the, the government has given this council over £50 million. Pounds. That's... Um, Town deal funding in Newcastle, it's town deal funding in, in Kidsgrove, and it's High Street funding in Newcastle. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity for this council. We've never we've never had money like this before. The sort of things that we're spending on it, and, and Simon and Matt will go into more details on this. The sort of things we're looking at, if you go north to south, you think of Chatley Valley Enterprise Zone outside of Kidsgrove, 1,800 jobs. It's an enterprise zone, so the business rates will stay within the enterprise zone. Normally, the way business rates work, we give half it straight back to the government. That will all stay in Newcastle um, to help develop that area. And 1,800 jobs, absolutely fantastic news for the borough, all brought about by um, the uh, Town Deal funding helping to close the viability gap on, on the area. But it's just it's just amazing news. Kisgrove Pool being done, again, using using High Street uh, Town Deal money. You see the civic offices in Newcastle, three quarters of the way demolished now. High street fund money that's not high street, town deal money that's paying, paying to for that. Um, you look outside the town, you look at Ritzies, what I call Ritzies, it's, it's my age probably, I think it's Zanzibar, isn't it? Last week. Uh, I can't even remember the crystal, I'm that old. Um, but they, you know, that, that's gone now, going to be um, units on there, housing units on there. Um, York Place, we've just, we've just bought York Place now to look at, to look at what we're going to do with that. This is all high street fund money and town deal money. And this is the sort of thing that we, we're spending it on. Uh, and it's it's just, I just can't be too enthusiastic about it. It is just absolutely fantastic news for Newcastle. And I hope I haven't stolen Simon's thunder, but I know he's, he's poised and, and raring to go. So if I can pass over to him. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, um, Councillor Sweeney. And um, thank you, um, members, for inviting me again to take you through what we're doing on the town deal and future high street i'll take you through i've got a little bit more detail and some more pictures and some more up-to-date um slides to show you how the money's actually been spent and as councillor sweeney indicated there that is a picture of what is now um the civic buildings on merrill street on the old rycroft site there you can see that that building is now well and truly being demolished as i think i told you last time i was in in at scrutiny um 
the asbestos has taken quite a long time. That, they started in August, but they're now at the very end of getting rid of all the asbestos in that last block on the right, and the rest of the building is being pulled down. Um, there is some um, discussion around how we might reuse some of that material that's coming out. And I know it looks a bit like, well, how on earth would you use any of that? But you can crush the stone for hardcore for the next building going on top. There's even discussions about how we might be able to use the steel work that's coming out of it. So we try and reduce the carbon footprint of what's going back. Um, the demolition should be finished on that building towards the end of May. So we're, we're really on track with that, which will then lead us into what we want to do with the Rycroft through the future high street um, funding. Now, yesterday you will have seen, hopefully, that there was a cabinet paper published for cabinet's um, consideration next week around what we do on the um, the Rycroft site on the old um, civic building site and the old Sainsbury site there. And also um, members will probably um, can picture in their head, there's a testing center, COVID testing center down there as well, which is due to, to leave site at the, end of, at the end of March. So that leaves the clear site ready for redevelopment. We, um, as a part of the future high street, deal and the commercial strategy of the council we're rebuilding or building and providing a new 450 place car parking <clears throat> facility multi-story car park modern new facility with um, more disabled parking spaces and um, electric charging points etc and um, there was been there's another report going through cabinet next week which is on the um the sale of a portion of the site to Aspire Housing, which you can see on the right there for their new headquarter building, and um, for 90 residential units, high-end um, retirement homes for over 55s. It's not a care facility with um, medical um, provision on site. It's just a if you can think McCarthy and Stone, that type of facility, but um, without the care provision, et cetera, that, and that will bring a lot of footfall, both the, the offices, which will house up to 200 people and, you know, the 90 new units that will bring more footfall into the town centre, because that's the whole aim of Future High Street is to change the um, the demographic and the usage of the, um, the town centre and get more footfall and then we get more, a better more vibrant town center which is the whole aim and then the other thing in the middle which has come as a surprise to most people um and it came as a surprise to us but we've been approached by several multinational hotel groups just um that have told us that they are considering developing up to a hundred bed mid-market range hotel in um in newcastle they've been looking at the figures etc they think that we're ripe for the mid-market range we've got the budget range covered now but we've we and we know who we are we don't think we're going to get a, an oriental mandarin for example um but we 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 ripe for for a, a mid-range so we're we're starting to have some discussions about them which was which will be really interesting because um there are various models of how you provide hotels etc and it might be something that the council can part can participate in but what i wanted to show you with this diagram is what they call the massing of the site to show you that we're not going to fill it with cheap student accommodation or cheap retail drive-throughs for McDonald's and stuff like that. No disrespect to McDonald's, but, um, but it's that type of thing that we don't want to do. We want to create a, um, a smart end of town with open spaces, spaces where people can dwell, lots of landscaping and, and um, public realm, where it becomes a place where people want to go and visit as well as you know walk through so what we try we might do is that it, that that spine of green that goes between the hotel and the homes if you that is wider than iron market for example there's going to be a nice wide boulevard and what we will potentially do is move the um, pedestrian crossing so you'll be able to walk from town up the up that spine that green spine and across the a52 there and it, it just so you've got uh, permeability into the town and stuff so that that's um you know our blueprint for what we're trying to create there we're not you know subject to um you know contrary to rumor it's not going to be filled with student accommodation it's not going to be filled with cheap retail units that will take um footfall out of the town it's going to create more footfall and create more life within the town as well and then the next slide here is really what we're trying to do so you can see that you know we've got one and a half 1.7 hectares of land that we're going to develop um 
we're going to try and get through over 300 jobs supported in the supply chain as we build this because um, a lot of the contractors that we will be using and the spa will be using we're using local labor local firms for construction etc so we want to try and retain as much of the Newcastle pound in Newcastle or within a 10 mile radius as we can. We have to be honest with ourselves that we don't have every skill and every manufacturer and every product in the borough, but there are ways of designing around that type of um, limitation to make sure that we get the best for the people and businesses of Newcastle as well. So that's just um, a flyer and that was produced and um, that was sent out with the cabinet papers yesterday. So if you need more information or you want to share that with um, your constituents, please look on the, the cabinet agenda and be able to, you'll be able to download that. And as uh, Councillor Sweeney um, indicated, we've now completed the purchase of York Place. That took place on the 1st of March. We're really excited about that. Um, and now we are, there is another cabinet report going through cabinet next week, which is uh, to appoint a contractor and consultant team to have a look at what we might do with that building in terms of how we might redevelop it and what's best for it, the town and um, the commercial strategy of the council, etc. cetera. Um, and that was, that was bought using Future High Street's money. Um, and we were really pleased that we got our hands on that because it gives us a little bit more control in the, in the town centre. If I move up to Kids Grove. Um, oh, sorry, if I just go back one, two slides. The, the multi-storey car park, we have appointed a design and build contractor, Morgan Sindel, to um, design and build that. They're in the um, phases now of doing some feasibility studies and well, and Councillor Fear's comments about um from last cabinet and um, last scrutiny sorry about what we're knocking down and putting back these designs will come through um, a consultation process so it's not like we will just arrive at a design and you'll see it in six months and go where did that come from well, there's a whole there'll be a whole um, scenario of consultations around that so I hope that keeps Councillor Fear happy. If we Simon move just before you move on to Kids Grove yep. can I just ask members um, if they've got any questions on future high street fund please. Councillor Fear. Yeah, thanks very much, Mr. Chairman, since I've, I've been referred to. Um, yes, I am happy in a way, and I think this is, is something we need to take really, really seriously. Um, Councillor Sweeney is quite right. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for this town. Um, what we put down in forms of bricks and mortar will affect the look of this town. It will have a knock on effect to what we've been discussing earlier. We've got a lovely historic centre to our town, and what I would like to see is architecture. Um, let's face it, the old civic offices are ghastly 1960s building. What we need to see there is better improved architecture, which reflects the heritage of the town. And um, I'm all for consultation. I, I, I strongly suspect many members are in agreement with me, but we've got to get that right, because if we don't get that right, we will actually be cursed for the next two generations, because that's how long this stuff will be around for. Thank you, Councillor Fear. Simon, if, would you like to yeah, respond to that? Uh, yeah, that's fine. I wholeheartedly agree, Councillor Fear. Um, we are custodians of the town, and we need to make sure that what we leave behind is better than what uh, as we received it in. When we were talking to the architect that we have appointed to look at the options for... Um, York Place and also for the car park and um, they were both talking about the historic nature the different architectural styles in the high street and how fascinating it was if you look up from the pavements and you look at the buildings themselves we've got hundreds of years of history dotted around the town and we owe it to the town to to make it look um with a nod to that architecture but with a contemporary feel rather than because you can't replicate and if you and then it becomes pastiche so we need to just have a nod but um i think we want more than a nod to be honest with you and um <laughs> this will be an interesting conversation um again i reject the word pastiche which is a coward's way out of of having this conversation but we'll, we'll live to the future it'll be interesting i think you just called me a coward but i'll, I'll move on <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, thank you. I think it's important and we've now minuted it on two consecutive meetings, uh, the need for, for that uh, degree of uh, clarity and uh, interaction through consultation with us, please. Any other members wish to speak on future high streets? No, so we'll crack on with Kidsgrove Town Deal, please, Simon. Okay, so Kidsgrove. 
So the first uh, project that we started, um, we got that fast tracked through the the town deal money um, this time last year, and that is due now for completion at the end of June and July this year. And that is a picture of the filled in swimming pool. Now I don't know whether members will remember, but there used to be a diving pool at the end of that where that scaffolding was sitting and it was about six six meters deep five six meters deep that's now been filled in the swimming pool has been relined you can see there's new ceiling in there, there's new glazing this um the center is um fast approaching completion the community group have agreed to take um a lease on the building they are out now advertising for uh, staff to operate it, a, a sports centre manager is being uh, recruited, volunteers being recruited, they've got crowdfunding going on, Sport England are throwing more money in, Kids Grove Town Deal, Town Council, sorry, are putting more money into it for their opening costs and their, you know, the actual equipment that's going in, so they're, 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 they're moving on really, really quickly with that, and our contractors, Wilmot Dixon, are doing a fantastic job of turning a uh, derelict and very difficult build to complete but they are turning it into a, a new center for for us so we're very very happy about that chatley valley was also mentioned this is up near um up near the a500 this is a site that um harworth a developer own and then um, this is a, an overall plan the the, the building uh, with my cursor here it shows you this building here is the jcb plant and um, that some of you might know and this is the new entrance here that we are providing money for for the through the town deal that will unlock the entrance and deal with a a mains issue that was running that is running down there that needs to be sorted out when you when you re um when you realign the road with a roundabout and the entrance etc what harworth um were facing was something like a 14 million pound funding viability issue which we've managed to work with them to try and reduce that down some of it was through the town deal which was 2.7 2.8 million and the county council have invested 3 million through um advanced business rate expenditure to unlock the viability of that site and they've now got um planning permission to start and they should be starting in may with the first round of all intents and purposes muck shoveling to try and level the site out because it's quite it's um, it's quite undulating what we're trying to create there is a advanced ceramics campus with a company called Lucidian, who do some amazing stuff with ceramics. And some of the stuff that they do is on the Mars rover and up on the moon on those things that go around taking samples and stuff. I mean, it's really cutting edge and they, they're moving out of their headquarters and their facilities in, um, in Stoke temporarily moving down to stone and then relocating up here in 24 and um, the county council and the borough council are keen to help them establish their new research um, headquarters and manufacturing facility up here and one of the things that we're looking to do <clears throat> on these smaller units at the top here is to create a small business park that will support the supply chain of um, Lucidian um, and we will hopefully own and operate those as part of our commercial strategy. And Howarth have had some very serious interest for both of those large units that are down on the bottom right hand side of the screen, um, which will then, you know, hopefully by 2025, we could see that that whole site is um, fully built out and fully occupied um, and creating those 1800 jobs, but also creating um, the business rates for, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the borough, which will be great. If we move into Kids Grove itself, the, the station is undergoing. Um, well, it's the car park has been undergoing some undergoing some work, and we've been working with Network Rail and um, Rail North West, I think it is, or Northwest Rails, can't remember. Uh, um, how we will help them through the town deal um, upgrade the station because it's the next station on from Crew where the HS2 track will come in. So there's a business case being developed for that and a design being created, which will go into government um, this month or early April, which will then hopefully get approved in the summer. So that station can then be upgraded. Um, and along with the car park works the network rail will do and create a, <clears throat> a new rail hub for Kids Grove, which will be then accessible to the wider rail network through the crew, through crew line. So that's that's good. 
we're also looking at in in the town centre itself away from the um the canal and the <clears throat> train station to try and create some sort of rationalization of what's happening in the town centre here so here in this this um strange shaped pink building that's the aspire building and they're looking to to have a look at what they'll do with that this is the library here and then we've got some sorry this is the no that's the library there and then we've got some a row of shops and what we want to try and do is create that entrance down to the station to create a more visible and more um appealing more public realm and but also create some sort of shared hub where services can come in and um, provide services to the people of Kids Grove centrally and we're looking at um, around the, the library building on that and that that's currently being designed out and that will go into government for approval at the same time as the train station. We're also working with the Canal Trust to try and get some improvements down to the canal from the town centre and from the station with um better walkways and um improved access etc so that that business case is in its final throes of getting developed as well as you uh, you probably remember that the kids grove town deal was the first one of the two to be agreed and um that went into government first so we're ahead of the newcastle so this is why these are we've got um this these schemes are ahead of the ones that are in newcastle as part of it, we've had some drop in consultations to explain to the residents of um, Kids Grove and the businesses what we're planning, whether they like it, whether they've got any more suggestions, etc. This was done at, um, at the um, uh, Kids Grove Town Hall. Um, and that we had some really positive feedback about what we were doing um, and frustration that it was taking so long because Kids Grove has been promised redevelopment and investment for quite some time now and that was, there's a real appetite for things to change and things to happen and um, we were able to turn up having put money where our mouth is in terms of the Kids Grove Sports Centre because they could see that was physically happening and they could we could explain to people that this next round of um, interventions was coming from the same pot of money so they were more believing and less doubtful that things wouldn't check that wouldn't change and there wouldn't be any money coming through because that's always a problem when you're when you're going out and you're promising the world people have heard it before probably and they don't tend to believe you and especially if you're speaking from as you're a council officer they instinctively don't believe you i found um any questions on kids grow before i move on to uh newcastle Councillor Panther. Just a quick one. Uh, thank you, Simon. Uh, regard the swimming pool, uh, what length is it? Will it be suitable for national championship events at all? It's 25 metres long, I think. It's the same length as it was before. Whether it will be ready, whether it's for national, I don't know. I'd have to get back to you on that one because I'm not a swimmer. But it's the same length as it was before. We haven't shortened it. We've just made it less deep. The no, reason I asked that particular question because I've been approached by a gentleman whose granddaughter is a championship swimmer and looking for more places to train to championship levels. That was all. Well, in the first instance, we've got J2. I think that is um, a, that is 25 metres long, I believe. And um, because the uh, they do they do training for the UK swimming team there and I only know that because a friend of mine's daughter was in the GB team and she used to train at J2 but you'd have to ask Andy Arnott or Mark Hugh Mark Clues at um the Kids Grove Centre. Thank you any other members Councillor Fear? Thanks very much Mr Chairman yes this is all very heartening stuff and I, I'm particularly pleased to, to hear about Chatley Valley I in a long long time ago when I was a new councillor uh, Councillor Ted Holland always used to refer to the Chatley Valley as, as the jewel in the development crown for the borough, and it's really great that this is coming to fruition. Um, could you just tell us a little bit more about the 1,800 jobs, which I think is absolutely tremendous. I take it these are, because of the, the sort of firm that are going on there, these are high-quality jobs. They're not, they're not just shelving jobs, so to speak. Uh, thank you, Councillor. I think it'll be a mix um, because th there'll be high quality um, or high skilled uh, in the Lucidian end of town because that their manufacturing is quite specialised and stuff. 
what will go in the two larger units we i don't know but they probably one will probably be a logistics center just by the sheer size of it um because they don't tend to have manufacturing facilities of that size etc so i think there's going to be a, a broad range of the jobs available on the site and it won't just be um uh, it's not going to be an amazon warehouse where people pack you know it'll be it'll be because amazon aren't interested obviously but um there'll be a broad range of, jo of um, offers of um offers of employment available and i think in the smaller um, business park that we'll um hopefully own and rent out there'll be some you know mid-range jobs that will be supporting the the more um quality not quality but high-end skilled jobs that will go be going on in lucidian thank you any other members no so we'll move on to newcastle then please simon okay so newcastle as i said is running a few months behind kids grove we got the bid um submitted and agreed in august and we have till June, sorry, August last year, we have till June this year to get our business cases in. And we've got a company called Santec working on us, working with us on this one, which is um, we're moving at a pace in terms of what we need to now get agreed and finalised in for so we can get the board's approval. So the various projects, first project we've we've cut classes, the gateway sites, which is the former Zanzibar or um, as Councillor Sweeney called it. Twinkle or something. I can't remember what he called it now, but um, <laughs> it's the old nightclub, which has now been um, knocked down and demolished. And, and members will probably have seen the interesting side um, elevation with an interesting advertising sign, which the owners of the site, Aspire Housing, are trying to retain. So when they do redevelop for their um, old people's accommodation you'll still be able to see that sign which is a little bit nod to heritage of newcastle old so that'd be quite good but what we're also doing with them is we will be creating some smaller industrial units for startup and that that's not like your white van man that's more of an artisan live work space um workshop downstairs living accommodation upstairs which will be um on the back of the site opposite, probably on the street that's got the plumbing center on it if you know that end of town and then the gateway site will actually be as you're driving down the hill into town the um the units will then create that gateway into the town and um aspire have got a world-renowned um architect working on that and on their headquarter building on rycroft because they want to create um some really interesting architecture that um um is quality rather than um just red bricks and we're also um, one of the other gateway sites is the Midway multi-storey car park, which we, we will be able to demolish once we've built the new multi-storey car park on the Rycroft site. So you can see how you begin to see how these things start to mesh together and one thing needs to happen and then the other thing can happen. But what we're trying to do there, and it's, it'd be quite interesting because what, what we started, we started to get feedback from people. It's like if you knock the whole of the Midway down, and then you have to create more foundations you're actually creating more carbon and using more carbon by demolishing the whole building and then recreating the foundations that were already there so one of the options we're looking at is quite interesting is knocking down to a certain level creating a flat platform and then building from that platform so then you save carbon and not by not creating because most of the carbon in any building is in is creating the foundations and the basements and stuff well, we've already got that and they're quite sturdy and so we're looking into that and that the, um, that's an interesting way a new a new way of building that a lot of um inner cities and built up areas are now taking advantage of and we might have a look at that and see what we can do with that but also enhancing what it actually looks like from the road because that's one of the issues it's ugly but it is also old and tired and falling down and expensive to keep so we just need to make sure that we can keep the bits in the bottom in the foundations and build above it but that that's an interesting an inch that'll be an interesting design i think that will come through and it'll and then maintain the links into the roebuck center and the town center and we've just made some indicative um assumptions of what we might be able to create given what else is going on in the town center we need to be mindful of what we can commercially provide in the town center rather than oversupply one particular element so it it wouldn't make sense to put a retirement home on that site given that we've got um other 
other such developments going on around the town, we'd have to look at the another sector within the market. So that's something that we're looking into at the moment as well. And the next one is the Astley Performing Arts Centre, which is a centre for circus, which is quite a unique offer um, and the government are quite keen on it because it is a, it's got a little bit of an edge to it it's it's a nod to uh, philip astley and i think i've taken you through this before um about how we create a circus skills school um we uh, a research center a showcase facility training facility um destination type place which will you know we've had the astley fest etc and york place is uh, actually sitting on where Philip was born long long time ago we think so we'll, you know we want to try and make more of that we are we've got some really interesting contributions from people around the world who have got some knowledge of how we create circus schools from nothing because we need to create the actual organization that takes control of this etc and one of the guys that was helping Shakespeare in the north up at Prescott um, with the Arts Council um, has been helping us in the past and so lots of lots of different aspects of how we get this together um, it's not an easy one to crack because it, it's you know you're literally starting something from scratch but there is definitely the will and the determination to make this work um, and we're looking at various locations and we're going to have to um, finalize those quite quickly because the as, as, you, as I said earlier the um, the bids have to go in 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 June so but we're, we're, we're cracking on with that one that's an exciting one for us. Nutton another um, key investment area for for the borough council because um, the master plan and the one public estate work that was going on there with Aspire and um, county council um, presented a master plan but the, unfortunately you know all master plans come with a cost and what we're able to do is plug some of that cost through um, the town deal so we're you know new village hall business center re um, extension and um, some new homes some viability issues with um, funding gaps that um, aspire and, and county needed etc so that's that's all going well so that will actually see some improvements to to Nutton and I think the community centre you'll have noticed the community centre and the old PCT building have been demolished and that was part of the um, advanced town deal money I think you might remember that from previous um, presentations where I've wobbled on like I am now so I'm trying to hurry up and get to the end so we <laughs> it's strange sitting in a room just talking to myself because I can't see anybody's face apart from the screen so I'll, I'll try and get through it. Cross Street is um, just next to Nutton and that is a, an Aspire facility of 74 houses um, sorry getting rid of 74 and putting 125 back there was a um, it's part of the master plan but it was Chester master plan but there was a financial viability issue so the town deal is um, contributing to that and Aspire also managed to get some one public estate warm homes grant I think it is or something um, into that to, to help that come forward and they're on with that shortly. Newcastle Sustainable Public Transport. This is about upgrading the, the bus station, getting some signage is around, getting, um, a, you know, trying to work with the operators to green up their bus fleet so we don't have as many diesels, um, try and get um, air quality improved and passenger experience and stuff like that. So this is a project that's been led by the county because they they deal with that side of the infrastructure and um, that business case is is ready to go in but that will um that is around getting people in and around the town um with more services and in, a, in better quality um buses etc um, electric charging points for cars this is going to become more and more important to all of the town centers and cities across the country um in terms of people being able to charge their electric cars so for example the new Rycroft car park will have more electric charging points than any other car park in the borough you'll probably see some of them that have already started going in in dribs and drabs in some of our car parks but on street and um, park charging points as well um, uh, it's it just brings people into the town and makes it more uh, more accessible for them if they do have an electric car so then they can shop and dwell in the town whilst recharging their car. I think that's going to become more and more commonplace uh, across the country anyway, so it's, we need to be ahead of the curve on that one. 
full fibre network. This is what Councillor Sweeney was talking about when um, we were listening to Alex's from the bid around Wi-Fi. This is around 5G coverage and enabling gigabyte speeds across the town centre. Um, there are various methods of doing this, and we're still working through the science and the logistics of how this would actually work, but it's about making sure Newcastle is at the forefront of getting the fastest broadband coverage and speeds um, than other people in the area, other towns and cities in the area. So we, we put ourselves at the front of people's minds if they want to come and do some, they want to create some new businesses here and they, they're worried about broadband speed because again, this is gonna be more and more important. And I think we've seen that over the last couple of years, particularly, um, we wouldn't have been able to cope as a country if we hadn't had digital connectivity and um, the borough is very keen to put Newcastle um, at the forefront of that technology so we future proof ourselves going forward. Town centre permeability links with the um, sustainable travel and other um, bid being put together by the county council this is about walking and cycling measures and um, creating um, at level grade um, at grade pedestrian crossings, et cetera, and upgrading them, um, resurfacing works, et cetera, and just creating a, a walking cycling corridor across the town into from Keele all the way into Hanley, um, which creates better access for all sorts of um, ways of travel into the town. So you don't have to rely on buses or cars, you'll be able to walk or cycle, et cetera, again, which is gonna be um, more important going forward as well particularly now as everything's getting more expensive, but um, we're seeing a lot more people wanting to use their bikes. Um, and we saw that during the, um, the pandemic as well. So we've, we've, we want to try and future-proof the town for that as well. And the Digital Society, which is creating a, a hub within the town centre for businesses and individuals to get on board with the digital agenda, um, but also getting businesses involved in that training and facilitating training with individuals and um, create um, and providing skills support etc so that we we have whilst we have super fast broadband and gigabyte we also want uh, residents that are able to access that side of employment opportunities and aren't excluded or challenged or scared by the thing so we want to try and open that up through a, a skills digital hub and the University of Keele University are leading on that and that centre will go in the town centre again which will then drive footfall into the town but also links into the um, skills and training hub that we created through part of the town deal advanced monies in Lancaster building so we again it's that that niche um, say niching but that's the wrong word but the, the meld the molding of um, different activities to create um, a better skilled workforce and that's it thankfully any questions i'll stop sharing and i um i'll unless anybody wants to go back to any particular slide happy to take any questions chair does anybody want to go back to any slide first of all no okay so no, i'll stop sharing I'll share. thank you Okay, so Councillor Panther. Just question? a quick one, uh, thank you, Simon. You mentioned about the Barracks Road area, about a new footbridge. Can you tell us where exactly it is proposed to be. I think it's going to be around the um, the upper end of Barracks Road towards where Castle House is, but I can't one hundred percent say definitely where that is, where that will go. But uh, as soon as I know, I will share that. Thank you. Any other questions, Councillor Fear? Uh, just very briefly um, about cycling. I mean, I, I, I'm a party pre because I am a cyclist and I, I come down from Keel on a regular basis. What I'd say is that um, in terms of opening that corridor from Keel to Hanley, the obvious way down into the town from Keel on a bike is, is on the Orm Road because you avoid a couple of hills. That's the way cyclists will go. And this is really for county, I guess, rather than the borough. But I mean, the Orm Road is a bit tired in parts and... Um, mending its surfaces would, would be no bad thing if you're a cyclist. Thank you, Councillor Fear. We'll make a note of that. I don't see any other members um, wishing to indicate to speak. Um, lot, as usual, lots and lots of exciting projects underway which are going to make a massive difference to both Newcastle and Kidsgrove 
uh, which is to be applauded. And it's great to see such good progress. Um, so thank you, Simon, for the update and your time this evening. Thank you, Chair. So we'll now move on um, to item eight on our agenda, which is the work program. Uh, for those of us that will be in the room in June, then on the current um, work plan, we have the uh, update on the borough local plan and the responses from the consultation. Um, we have asked HS2 to come and uh, present to us as to what they're going to be doing within our borough within the next year. Um, the town deal normal update and as you've heard tonight we're also asking the borough commander to come and talk about police presence in the town centre so that is the work program for the next meeting um, i've not been made aware of any uh, questions from the public and neither have i been made aware of any urgent business so at that point at um, half past eight i would thank members for their attendance tonight and wish you a pleasant journey home thank you